Hey everyone, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. So it has been a while since I have done a knitting podcast. I think it was the first week of Ramadan or the week before I think it was Ramadan. And I had said I was probably going to do my next podcast the week after Eid, so the week after Ramadan. And that just didn't end up happening. I just, I got caught up with the launch for Scarves for Love, my comeback launch just because I took quite a bit of a break. If you're interested in my Scars for Love business and kind of what's been going on the past few years, then please do check out that updated Scars for Love video. And I am out of breath, oh my goodness. The kids left to the masjid with my husband, alhamdulillah, and um, all thanks to God, and my daughter's taking a nap, and I've been procrastinating this podcast all week, and then, I was like, okay, well, I want to wear one of my finished objects. So that is what I am wearing now, and I will show it to you guys. I will admit I am so hot, though, because the garment that I am wearing underneath it literally, like, sticks to my skin. So there's, like, no air going on here, even though my finished object, I feel, is quite airy um, and will probably be a decent... I would say like spring garment. I don't know. I might not be able to wear it during the summer. Anyways, we'll talk about that in a second. And then, so I had just launched my comeback collection for Scarves for Love. And I've really, really been holding off on taking scarves for myself. I think like anybody, when you own a business where you make a craft and you make multiples of those things, whether it be you're a yarn dyer or, you know, a, a clothes producer, whatever it may be, you tend to like fall in love with at least at least like one thing from each collection, right? And then you're like, oh, I got to take it for myself because especially sometimes when you make like one of a kind products and you're not entirely sure you can recreate that product, <laughs> then you're kind of like, oh, but what if I can't recreate this? What if it's not as, as cool or as nice as it was this time? And so I've been hesitating, especially too, my daughter is so young. She does not need a head covering at this point. And, um, but I just absolutely love this one. Look at it, guys. Oh my gosh, it is so gorgeous. So this is my Northern Lights scarf um, from my comeback collection for Scars for Love. They are available on my Etsy account. I'll leave my Etsy account down below. <laughs> so anyway, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear this scarf today on my video. And then I was kind of like, but I don't know. Does it match with this top? And so I'm like really carefully looking at all the colors. And I'm like, you know what? All the colors that are here are actually in the scarf. So they might clash a little bit, but honestly, all the colors that are in my jumper are in my scarf. <laughs> but it does kind of feel like one of those like print on print situations, but I don't really care. And then on top of that, I was like, okay, so then what face veil do I wear? And, you know, not only as a Muslim woman who chooses to wear a head covering, so we call ourselves hijabis, um, like... Not only do you have to match your scarf with your outfit, if you like that, you don't have to match, you know, do your own thing. Um, but then when you're a naqabi, so you're somebody who wears a naqab, which is a face covering. So there is a difference between the hijab and the naqab. And this is a choice, in my opinion, and I choose to do it. Um, so not on, only do I have to like match my scarf to my shirt, now I have to watch match my naqab to my hijab and my outfit so it's really nice when you can get like matching sets so you get like the matching face cover with the matching scarf but I can't do that with my tie-dye I'm just I'm not going to make tie-dye Nicole's <laughs> so, so I was like okay first I tried a gray one and then I tried um like kind of like a pinky lavender-y one so I, I actually I have a Nicole that's kind of like this color here this kind of like light lavender -y lilac but it kind of goes more on the pinky side I think um, but then that just looked like too much. I was like, I'm just going black. I'm just, <laughs> it's the easiest thing for a Muslim woman or any, you know, religious woman or woman who chooses to cover her face. Just go black. <laughs> if you're, if you're ever wondering, just, it, it doesn't fail. So anyway, so I'm like rushing to try to like get dressed and ready and make sure I have all my stuff to show you guys. 
And then I'm setting up my phone because I did realize there was one or two videos where I actually used the back camera on my cell phone. So I can't actually see myself um, instead of using the front facing camera. Man, phone companies need to get with it. They need to find a way to make just as good, and maybe there are phones, maybe it's just not my phone, um, just as good of quality on the front facing camera as they do on the back camera because I have realized, I mean, I'm sure all of us, right, you know, because of Instagram, Facebook, whatever it may be, you know, you're always wanting to see yourself when you're taking a selfie or doing a little video or something like that, but the camera quality just isn't as good. It is, it's more blurry, it's just not as high quality, but when you turn your camera around, you're like, holy crap, I didn't know my camera had such an amazing, or my phone had such an amazing camera. So I did notice there was a little bit of a quality difference. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do videos like this because I do just think that there's a quality difference. And for YouTube especially and Instagram and stuff, like you just wanna have you know content that looks really nice. Um, I'm hoping to transition back over to my Canon Rebel T3i camera but for some reason, there's like a glitch or something in my memory card and it's not allowing me to take long videos. I, it's the memory card I've used forever to make videos, but for some reason it's not allowing me. So I think I just need to get a new memory card. So that's the only reason I haven't been using that as well as, you know, then you have to upload it to the computer and edit it and all that kind of stuff. Whereas if I do it on my phone, I can just edit it on my phone. <laughs> I just use an app called InShot, I think it is. So anyway, so if you do feel like it's kind of a weird angle or I'm looking in weird places or whatever, it's just because I'm not used to this view. I don't know really like what you guys are seeing. <laughs> so anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into this because I really, I think this is gonna be a long one. So please just grab a cup of tea. I'm a coffee girl, grab some tea. <laughs> I'm a coffee girl, grab some tea, grab some coffee. I wish I was more of a tea girl. I really, really do because I, I really love like the the health benefits of tea and to I know that there's health benefits in coffee too I know some people will disagree with that but there actually are proven scientific health benefits of coffee it's just all the crap we put into the coffee that makes it no good anymore <laughs> so I actually drink my coffee with raw milk I drink my coffee cold um, I live in a hot climate. I cannot do hot coffee only in the winter. I cannot, I did so, I don't know, I feel it's so weird. As soon as the temperature starts warming up, hot coffee just does not taste good to me. It's not appetizing. I don't want it. Um, also too, if I use hot coffee, then I have to use like an organic half and half, or I, I do like the silk soy from when I was plant-based. And anyways, I drink my coffee cold, therefore I use my raw milk, my raw locally sourced milk, cow's milk, <laughs> and it's just got tons of benefits. If you don't know all the good benefits about raw milk, you're missing out. Do your research. If you think it's unsafe, just that's okay, but I've been drinking it for years and years and years, so alhamdulillah, I really believe in the benefits of like all of the natural things we can gain from all the vitamins and minerals and whatever that Allah provides for us, that God provides for us on this earth. So I'm just a proponent of more natural things, I guess. So, but that's okay to each their own. Um, so anyways, it was so funny. I saw a skit the other day. It was this English comedian and he was like, he said something, I, I'm going to butcher it, but he's like, I don't know about you, but I think we have enough milks. <laughs> He's like, we've got oat milk and soy milk and almond milk and cashew milk and this milk and this milk. And he just listed on and on. He's like, you don't know how hard it is to get coffee these days. I went into the coffee shop and they're like, would you like your coffee with this kind of milk or this kind of milk or this kind of milk? And I was just like, he's like, I just want milk from a nipple. <laughs> it was just like, it was just so funny because I could totally relate because I was plant based for like two years or so. Uh, but still, some of the habit has stuck. I still do enjoy drinking almond milk and like soy creamer every once in a while, um, you know, especially too when I don't have access to raw milk. And uh, but anyways, it was funny. So enough rambling. I'm going to go into the finished objects since I know that's what a lot of people enjoy when they watch podcasts like this knit and crocheting podcast. 
So we'll go into finished objects, we'll go into whips, and I'll kind of just like talk about each one and just say if there was any problems or what I liked or whatever it may be. So this is my first finished object and I will stand up. This is the Magic Hour sweater or jumper um, by Two of Wands. It has this V neck top ribbing um, and it is knitted flat. So you knit the back, you knit the front. There are some German short rows in the back so that the back kind of goes like this. And so there's ribbing here, ribbing on the cuffs. And I started out doing this pattern. <laughs> oh goodness. I started doing this pattern, I think it was like December 26th or 27th, something like that. And I started out doing it in the Irish cottage knitting style. So I was using the really long, needles that you stick under your armpit one and then you kind of work with you know you do kind of like an english flicking um but anyways <laughs> and it was just taking me forever i enjoyed the style but it was taking me forever and so once i was done with the front and the back i told myself you know i'm just going to do the sleeves on my regular needles at that point i had the licky needles uh the blush pink ones which i did i think like an unboxing video um here on youtube and my yarn so this yarn is a cotton polyester blend it is the comfy cotton from lion brand um it is the colorway like flower garden i think that's what it is i think it's the prettiest comfy cotton that they have um but anyways so i had a whole pack i got a three pack from like walmart it was like 21 bucks and I was looking for a pattern to do this in. I had just started knitting, so I wanted a really simple pattern. And so I just went on to Etsy and I think I just typed in like comfy cotton jumper or something like that. And I found the pattern from Two of Wands, Two of Wands, and it looked fairly simple. So I went ahead and I got it. And um, yeah, but it took me forever to finish. I mean, it literally took me, what, like almost six months to finish this jumper? It was absolutely ridiculous and uncalled for. <laughs> I found it was my in-between project. It was the project that I would pick up when I was like done with a project and I was getting ready to start another one. So I just kind of wouldn't get too much done or I had to like force myself to do it. It had nothing to do with the pattern itself. I actually really love this jumper and I would totally make another one of these. In fact, my mom likes it so much. Even she was kind of like, I would like to have one of those. And um, so I might have to knit another one. <laughs> it wasn't even the process and it's um, it's a garter stitch. So it's pretty much, you're pretty much just doing a knit stitch, front and back, front and back, front and back. So I don't wanna say it was boring because a lot of people like knit stitch. It makes it really easy. And if you just like love to knit to knit, then you'll like it. But I think it was just, I don't know if it was the style that I was doing it in. And then when I switched over to my licky needles or likey needles, the yarn was not moving. It was just sticking so much to those needles. And that's when I realized that I did not like those needles. I'm so thankful I ended up finding somebody on Instagram that would buy my needles from me used. And I got just enough money from them to buy a new set of needles. So maybe I'll show them to you in the future. I've taken pictures of them and everything like that on my Instagram account. So you probably already know if you follow me on Instagram, but I got the um, Knitter's Pride Ginger set and I'm actually using it right now on one of my current whips and I really really like them so if you're somebody who maybe you're a tight knitter you're really concerned with the yarn being able to move well you use all types of fibers um, I'm not so sure the licky needles are for you if you like your yarn to stick and your hands don't hurt very easily while you're knitting <laughs> then the likey needles might be for you uh, but they were not for me. So I'm so thankful I was able to buy, uh, find somebody to buy them from me um, because I hate that, like spending so much money on something and then like not using it or not enjoying using it. And as a new knitter, you know, I only have so many um, uh, interchange. I mean, I only have so many needles, which are fixed circulars, right? Um, you know, so having an interchangeable set is like really, really nice for a beginner knitter because you don't really have to worry about if you have a needle or a cord or whatever and then buying like a fixed needle or something like that for a new project 
And um, so I thought it was really important that I had a set. So anyway, so thank you to you if you watch my videos. <laughs> I did uh, I did end up sending her off the needles along with a little gift from my shop. So hopefully she enjoyed that and it made her purchase, you know, worth it, I think. Um, so anywho, so that's a finished object. This, I did really like it. I will say, I can't imagine there's a problem with the pattern. She works with Lion Brand to make these patterns, to work with their yarn. And um, I'm sure she has these patterns tested like crazy. But I was having an issue quite often. Um, I, I can't can't remember all the problems. I think there were two or three problems. One was that when you're doing, I think it was the back portion, she has you do it by measurement. And then the front part is done by row count. And so I was realizing for whatever reason, my if I had done as many rows on this front V-neck portion as was suggested in the pattern, my front actually would have been longer than my back, which I don't think is the point. That I don't think that's the design, right? I think the the if anything, the front and the back should be the same. <laughs> And the back is actually just a little bit longer because it's got those German short rows that created this slight round in the back above your butt area or over your butt area. And um, so I actually had to cut back on the pattern, the amount of rows I was doing on this V-neck area. And I think I ended up having to cut out like seven rows or something. And I'm thinking to myself, this doesn't seem right, right? Like, so I don't know if I did something wrong, like I said, I can't imagine there's a pattern issue <laughs> as well as there was something else I can't recall. Um, I can't remember if it was me picking up the V in the neck, but I could not seem to pick up the right amount of stitches. And I think there was something else, but I can't remember. So it must not be like that important, but you did have to seam all of this together. Um, I don't mind that. I don't mind the seaming. I love sewing. It doesn't bother me. It's always nice to have an all-in-one garment that you don't have to do that to. But if you're somebody who likes to work with cotton, maybe wants a little bit more structure to their garment, maybe you're a first-time knitter and knitting flat just makes more sense because maybe you come from a sewing background where you have flat pieces that you're sewing together. So the construction makes more sense. You don't mind the sewing. You like the sewing then I definitely think this is a project for you. Like I said, I really love the turnout, even though I didn't enjoy the process as much as I would have hoped. But I love the finished project. So thank you, Two of Wands, for creating just a very wearable jumper. And I love the, the, the yarn. It's nice and squishy. So anyway, so next project is my Sunday socks. So these are my Sunday socks. I'll just hold up one. My Sunday socks from Petite Knit. And I am using um, DK Weight yarn. This is uh, Mucho Gusto. Um, I believe it is a, mer a Merino Nylon. I think it's the Resilient DK from Sock Obsession um, or Sock Obsessions yarn. <laughs> I think I just call them all the time like Sock Obsessions. But anyways. I'll leave her link down below. Um, I am in love with this colorway. I would totally make a an entire top or just garment out of this colorway. It is just so cute and pretty. So I had, I did this. This was my next sock cast on after I finished my husband's vanilla socks. And I'm so glad that I did because if you've never made a pair of DK weight socks, you have to. DK weight socks are such a pleasure to knit up. It's a quick knit in comparison. It's just really nice. And oh my gosh, they're so squishy and so comfy. This yarn is just so soft and so nice. Um, I did wash them in a little bit of Dr. Bronner's lavender soap. Um, and then I didn't block them like on sock blockers, but I did just kind of like lay them out. Um, so I haven't even worn them yet. I've been waiting for this video to wear them. And, um, but I used DPN. So I used Knitter Pride, Knitter's Pride four millimeter, um, six inch DPNs. I had never worked with DPNs before. I thought this would be a good opportunity on a DK, you know, weight yarn on a pair of socks. 
it was a little fiddly at first, but once I got to my second sock, I started to really like DPNs. I'm not entirely sure I like it more than Magic Loop, but I think it's it's definitely the same enjoyment and maybe a little bit more. I, um, I, I use DPNs on my most recent whip as well. I, I'm liking DPNs. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because when you're using DPNs, you know, you have four, right? So where's four? Just say that's four, right? <laughs> four DPNs to make a circle. Um, instead of when you have magic loop, you just have two, right? To make the circle, one half of the circle, one half of the circle. So I feel like when you have four, it kind of relieves a little bit of tension in the circle. So when you're knitting, it's not like as tight. Um, and I don't feel like I have ladders as bad with the DPNs as I do with um, the magic loop, even though I will say I don't think my ladders were that bad with the magic loop. Um, but yeah, I, I do think I just, I will definitely, if I make, I'm going to make the Sunday socks again. I'm actually planning on making a pair for my mom, um, cause she really liked these as well. And I'm going to use the DPNs unless I'm like, you know, let me do magic loop just to see if I like it better on these particular socks. But anywho, I love these. I can't wait to wear them. And now that I've showed them to you guys, I am going to wear them. And I love sock obsessions yarn. I used her yarn on my current whip, so you'll see that as well. So again, this is the Mucho Gusto colorway that I absolutely love. So yes, so another finished project. Then I have, and I worked on this during Ramadan, my socks. Then I have this jumper that I'm surprisingly getting quite a bit of wear out of, um, considering it's so hot outside. So this was my, um, or is my, can you see? Diamonds and Baubles jumper by Lulu Loves. I found the pattern the same time I bought this jumper pattern. I bought them at the same time. Um, and this is crocheted, obviously. <laughs> and um, I just wanted, I think I was at the point where I just wanted to feel like I was challenging myself a little bit with crochet. And this seemed like one of those where it was easy enough, but it had some kind of cool details that you know, would be a little bit different than from maybe what I had been doing. So you have some skipped stitches that make these diamond patterns here, and then you have the baubles. Um, again, you do have to sew the sides together um, and the top, the shoulders together, but you actually crochet the sleeves on. So now she used a, it's supposed to be a one size, so you can see how big it is. Um, she used a worsted weight yarn and, um, I believe the pattern, I believe the pattern called for a six millimeter crochet hook. I think I had this yarn already. Um, this is the Lion Brands Pima Cotton in the colorway Pink Mist. I had purchased, a, I had purchased one roll of this just to see how, what the color was like, what the cotton feel was like. And then when I saw this pattern, I was like, oh, this pattern would work really well for the Pima cotton. So I went ahead and I bought enough to make this. And it turns out, I will say, this jumper only took two balls. And I think I made the medium or the large. And this only took two out of the three balls. So that means I made this jumper for like $16. That's pretty cool considering like the cost of yarn and knitting and crocheting. This here, I can't remember how many balls of yarn I used, but it was a lot. And it's funny because I had purchased the one and then I purchased the whole bunch of them so that I could make this and I didn't use one. <laughs> so I literally ended up with the one I had purchased originally. So I used all of the ones that I bought except for one. I want to say I used nine balls for this crocheted jumper. Um, so now, like I said, she used a worsted weight. Um, I think this yarn is considered a DK, I think, um, or maybe an Erin. So my gauge was not matching up with her gauge. And I was using a 5.5 because with the size of this yarn, a six millimeter just would have been more open of a stitch than I wanted. So I got a chance to finally use my furls hooks, my resin. Um, so I wasn't meeting gauge, 
but I knew that this was a really large oversized jumper. So honestly, I, I thought that it would be okay. And so when I started doing the rows, I was like, oh yeah, this is totally gonna be okay. It's gonna be really comfy. One thing I didn't take into account though, was that when I got to the sleeves, because of the weight of the yarn, these baubles are actually supposed to be here on my forearm, but instead they're actually up here on my bicep, which if you care about how clothes flatter you, you don't want baubles on your biceps. <laughs> Not as a woman anyways, um, but I've decided this is kind of my at home throw on um sweater and i have been wearing it the past few weeks i've noticed that my computer um, in in my kids school room gets very chilly um, in my computer area especially when i'm drinking cold coffee and i think just like the vent blows right on me so i'll just i'll wear this while i'm drinking my coffee and doing my islamic school or my natural dye workshops and it's just it's so comfy it's so so soft so I will say you can get away with using a smaller yarn on this pattern, uh, but yeah, just take those couple of things into consideration. I would have actually liked this to be a little bit more oversized. I know you're probably thinking like, oh my gosh, but it looks so huge. It, it is, it is. But once it's on and everything, it's just a nice comfy oversized where I wanted it to be like a, like how hers was, which is like really oversized. <laughs> So anyways, but I still really, really like it. Um, it was a lot of yarn though, I will admit. It was seemed like a lot of yarn. Um, I think I added up like the grammage <laughs> and it seemed like a lot of yarn for this jumper. And those Pima Cotton rolls from Lion Brand aren't that cheap. Um, so this wasn't like a super cheap project like this one was. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I would make it again. Although I loved the rhythm of it. I love, if you enjoy crocheting, you'll like the rhythm of this um, because it's quite intuitive. Like the skip stitches and the bobbles are quite intuitive. Once you do like the first kind of scheme of them, you know what to do after that. Um, and then a lot of it was just double crochet or it is a UK written pattern. So she calls double crochets trebles. Um, and then she calls single crochets double crochet. So as long as you you realize that, the pattern's really easy. Um, I was kind of concerned with that at first, but when I found out that it was just those two things, I was like, oh, that's that's fine, I got it. <laughs> so anyways, so I really do love kind of the rhythm of a double crochet. And I will say my furls hooks, I'm sure you guys are familiar, familiar with the company furls. Um, they're a pretty, what I would consider like a high-end crochet, hook company um and they have the resin hooks and the metal hooks and they do these beautiful like wood hooks and everything like that so i had gotten two of the resin hooks i think you can see that in a past video of mine and i had never used them before i will say i did not really care for it on the front end of the project but as i kind of started to realize that it's just because like if you knit a certain way, I mean, if you crochet a certain way, um, then the way that you pull out the resin hook, the tip of the resin hook is a little bit longer than probably what you're used to with clovers or Susan Bates hooks and things like that. And so it's almost like the tip of the hook kind of drags or kind of gets pulled or tugged on the stitch. So it seems like it's almost kind of hard to like follow through with the stitch. But once you kind of get used to how to use that particular hook, then it, it is a really nice hook. I do really like it at this point. Uh, but at first I was kind of like, oh, I would not buy this hook again um, because it just doesn't work with the natural flow of how I crochet. But like I said, once you kind of get used to it, your hand rhythm does change just slightly so that you can move the hook out a little bit easier, I guess. All right, so next finished project. This is actually a self-design, and you'll notice lots of Lion Brand here. This is because I'm going through yarn I had purchased when I first started crocheting and knitting. So this is a self-made design. I was working on this during Ramadan. This is an at-home garment, <laughs> ladies. So it is this here. So this is made with the, um, I think it's the, it's, it's like a comfy cotton, but it's like a confetti or fetti 
Anyways, this particular yarn is actually, um, it, they don't sell it anymore. What is that called when they get rid of it? Anyways, they don't sell it anymore. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, I was like, oh man, I might need to buy another ball. I'm happy I didn't have to though. This literally took two balls of this particular yarn. So if you see, it's kind of this like a crew color or kind of khaki neutral color. And then it's got like these little like neon uh, green and hot pink uh, polyester threads through it. So it is a full cotton except for just those little neon slivers of, yeah, neon yellow, orange, pink, green. So it's really cool actually when you look at it and it's super comfy. So it's just a little tank top. I was actually inspired to make this design because my son's blanket, two of my son's blanket, I'm doing a chevron pattern. And just randomly, I had held up the chevron like this to like, I think show my mom or something. And I was like, oh, I was like, that would make a really cool top. So this, all this is, is a chevron, pretty much. It's just a, a an elongated chevron. So I did more stitches um, on the sides. And then I did lesser stitches here. And um, so, yeah. So I was thinking about making a pattern for this. But then I was like, I don't want to have to pat. I don't want to pattern make. I just, I don't. I realized I don't. At first I thought maybe I did, but I don't. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so it's just a chevron top. And then I did uh, double stitches, pretty much double increases. So I did an increase on each stitch to kind of create um, this little, you know, whatever it's called. The blah, 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 blah. <laughs> If there were a sound to the, the way um, fabric lays, um, so anyways, but then the back is actually a crisscross back. So ah, I don't know if you're not going to be able to see that because I can't hold it up in a way. There we go. So it crisscrosses on the back here and then it actually has a tie on the back. So it is open up. So it's nice and, you know, cute for being around the house, around your man. <laughs> so I will say if I were to make this again, I would have made um, these straps um, thinner, shorter, um, and I like thinner, quicker, I mean, and I probably wouldn't have made it so long in the back. I think I underestimated how much the cotton was going to stretch actually on my body. And um, so, yeah, because there is, I actually, I don't think it's 100% cotton. I do think maybe there's a little bit of a polyester blend to it. But anyways, it is super, super comfy. So yeah, so that is another project. And this was a pleasure to knit up. I mean, I keep saying that to crochet up. You can tell I've been knitting a lot lately. Um, I used a five millimeter clover hook on this and it was just a, such a nice, smooth, relaxing project. This was something I had started back in like October of last year. And I just finished it during Ramadan and it was like one of the main projects next to my Sunday socks and this jumper that I worked on while I was on vacation the first week of Ramadan. And I realized like I was really wanting to work on this. I was really wanting to constantly pick this up because there was just something and too, I just love the clover hooks. They're just so smooth to work with. But there was just something about the double stitch that just like the double crochet stitch that was just like so soothing and the hook made it so nice and the yarn I love crocheting with cotton I've realized so that is my fourth finished crochet knit project now I am going to show you though um I have officially finished my son's American flag portion of his blanket. So if you've watched my other episodes where I've shown you this blanket, he wants half American flag, half Jordanian flag. And I told myself once I was done with the American flag portion, I was going to move over to my five-year-old's blanket to feel like I'm kind of giving like an even amount of time on them. So I've done the American flag portion. Now I need to graph out the Jordanian flag because I'll be doing double stranded color work kind of like I did on this. So I'll hold it. <laughs> My husband's like, isn't that so big? Why don't you just have the blanket be that? And I'm like, well, no, it's meant to like go on his bed. So it does actually need to be bigger, although it will look very large. 
So there is the blue. He wanted sky blue, not the darker blue. Um, and then you can see all the stripes. And it is accurate. It's 13 stripes like the real flag. And um, I did a herringbone stitch. This is a herringbone stitch with a seven millimeter clover hook with the, I believe it is the Aaron Waite um, Mega Balls from Hobie. So Hobie has these Mega Balls that are like 1400 yards or like 1200 yards. If you like working with acrylic, this is a good acrylic. This is, I think this is a really good quality acrylic. It's very soft, it's very squishy. Um, and, um, I, I don't really like working with acrylic anymore. I won't purposefully work with acrylic anymore, but if you have a massive project like this, where you're going to be using a lot of yarn and to, I'm using this not only on his blanket, but on my other son's blanket as well, then it's the way to go, man, because it's like $15 a ball and you get like what, 12 or 1400 yards in each ball. So yeah, so I'm excited to finally finish it, but I thought I'd show you guys because I am finished with the American flag portion. And um, yeah, and then I do have one sewing project actually. So I actually did a little sewing, I don't know, vlog or whatever of this little project, but this is for my daughter. It's a little jumper, a little patchwork jumper. So I did make it with some leftover scarf fabric. So it is very delicate, um, but I was just trying this little online uh, pattern out. Um, I will upload the video shortly. So you'll see me actually like picking the fabric out, making it, and then I'll list like the tutorial and everything on uh, YouTube because it is just a free pattern, but it's so cute. <laughs> so I thought I would show that to you and see the little patchwork i thought that was super cute so anywho so now i will show you some whips really fast okay so you guys know i've been working on my daughter's dress which is the carla's dress from petite knit and i am almost done oh my gosh this dress feels like it's taking forever i casted this on i believe it was march 4th and yeah i will say the cotton knitting the cotton has it hurt my hands a little bit. So I only have this much of the ball left and then I'm done. Alhamdulillah. Oh my gosh, I'm so over this dress, but it is so cute. So this is what I have so far. So when that ball is done, this dress will be done pretty much. So that means I use 200 grams. So four of these balls, because each ball is 50 grams. This is the organic Egyptian cotton from Hobie. So you can see here, this is a folded over collar. And then the Carlos dress is long sleeve. I made it a short sleeve since we live in hotter weather. I am loving the color and oh my gosh, it is so soft. If I did not mind how long it takes to knit this, I would make myself a shirt out of this yarn. It is so cool and soft and snuggly. So yeah, so I mean, some people might say, oh, well, it looks like it's long enough, right? But I'm just, I'm going to finish the ball. What am I going to do with the rest of that yarn? So I'm just taking a little bit of a break on it right now. But I'm just going to finish. I think I did do the two-year-old size. Um, so she can't wear it yet. So I figured I have time. I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> She's not going to be able to fit into this until like next year. So, but that's what I'm doing. I'm starting now and I'm making her clothes, knitting and crocheting her things that she can wear around two years old. This outfit too. Um, so I think this was made for 24 months. So anyway, so yeah. So starting now so that hopefully I'm done, you know, knitting her a whole bunch of stuff or crocheting her a whole bunch of stuff, sewing her stuff so now my next whip and then i'll just show you some yarn even though i posted the video anyways let's okay so this is the next whip i am showing you look how gorgeous this is can you see the gorgeousness the amazingness of this like what what the heck <laughs> so this here is the spring sorrel top by wool and pine um i had purchased four hanks of dk weight 100 percent merino 
from Sock Obsessions with the intention that I was going to make the May top by Andrea Mowry. Now, when I was getting ready to knit that project up, I looked back on the pattern and it had said that she is using a worsted weight yarn. I don't know why I did not catch that. I swear I saw, I don't know if it was a Ravelry page or something that said that it could be knitted up with a DK. I gauge swatched with the recommended needles and it was just too open. I didn't like it. You're pretty much doing a broken, a broken, what is it called? A broken knit stitch. So you're knitting through the back loop and I just did not like how it was looking. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to find another pattern for this beautiful, beautiful yarn <laughs> because I was like, I want to work with this right now. I'm done with all my projects. I was in kind of this limbo of just working on the Carla's dress. And I was like, I want to like knit something like not just this. So I, I was on the hunt for a project and I saw the spring sorrel top and I was like, this is so pretty, but you see me, right? If you know what the spring sorrel top looks like, I'll put a picture here, then you're going to think, well, where and when are you going to wear this? <laughs> well, I could wear it here in the house comfortably, you know what I mean? Or wear it at a girl's function or when I'm visiting with my family or my girlfriends when they come over, when I like go visit my mom or you know what I mean? But then I'm like, but this yarn is just so beautiful. I don't want to just like keep it inside the house, you know, or limited to a garment that I can only wear in the house. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make the spring sorrel, but I'm going to add sleeves. So I'm going to keep it crop top because I think once, you know, once I block it and everything like that, um, I got to make sure I'm not going to drop stitches here. Um, I think once it's blocked and everything, the crop top, it's going to like this jumper here. I would consider this almost a cropped. I mean, like my belly button is about here. <laughs> so I'm thinking it's probably going to sit maybe like this and i think that is going to be so cute on top of a dress so i'm doing the spring sorrel but i'm adding sleeves i'm keeping it crop top though so now i have four hanks i had messaged them and asked them if they thought that that would be enough to make it with sleeves and they said for sure in the size that i'm doing now the spring sorrel is supposed to be knitted up with negative ease not positive ease, which most sweaters are. Negative ease just means that it is lesser than your bust measurements or your shoulder measurements or just the measurements. So if you are a 38 bust, doing a negative ease means that you would do like the 36 or the 35 size so that you're actually lesser than your measurements. Having positive ease is just the opposite. So now again, I am not somebody who wants to have negative ease. I don't dress like this to show all of this. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to make it with positive ease. It's going to look a little bit different. Maybe it won't blossom out those, what do you call them? Little like leafy details as much as it would with negative ease and stretched on your body. But nonetheless, I think it's going to knit up beautifully. So I'm actually knitting. There's one size that would be like zero ease for me almost. And then there's one size up. So I'm doing the one size up. I think it was the size, I think it was 45. Um, so I'm doing the size 45 and I haven't tried it on yet. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm almost done with the yoke. I'm in the last, I'm in the third chart where you're closing up on some of those shorter pieces and you're elongating every other one um now of course being a new knitter i'm just kind of like i hope i can figure out how to make a sleeve on my own without a pattern and i think i'm just going to do whatever you know whatever stitches i can pick up here with ease without stretching it out um without losing stitches or whatever i think i'm just going to do that kind of all the way straight down and then i might just start decreasing like on my elbow maybe depending on how big it looks but honestly I don't mind it being a bigger sleeve so we're gonna kind of see as we go <laughs> so anyways but it is looking so beautiful 
This is the Sweet But Psycho colorway from Sock Obsessions in the 100% Merino DK. And you can see where I changed my hank. Can you see that? I had to add on a new hank about here. And you can see the color change. This one's a lot, pulling a lot more blue aqua. And this is pulling a lot more pink lavender. I do think with uh, speckled yarns and variegated yarns like this, you can kind of pull off not mixing your yarns back and forth. Um, so I'm not even worrying about it. I think it's going to be gorgeous. I'm not even bothered with if it looks like this was one skein, this was another skein. I, it doesn't bother me, but I am monogamously knitting on this, you guys. I have realized in my time of what it's been almost a year now i think it's been about a year since i've crocheted and knitted i have realized that i don't like having too many projects going on at once i start to feel bad that like i'm not working on other projects then i force myself to work on those projects and then it kind of starts to feel like work it's not as enjoyable so i was like you know what let me try out monogamously working on projects for a little while and see how that works and I've really, really been enjoying monogamously knitting on that. I'm not doing anything. Since I've started that project, I have not picked up anything else. I haven't even touched my Carla's dress. And I just got yarn that I was waiting for for like a month now from Knitting for Olive. And I'll show you that. And I have some patterns I want to do for my daughter. All of the yarn is for my daughter. And, um, and I'm just kind of holding off. Because I'm like, you know what? I'm really enjoying knitting this. There's no reason to cast on another project. I feel like sometimes that urge to cast on another project is because you're starting to lose interest in the project that you're working on. For whatever reason, you're just not enjoying it. It's not turning out how you liked. The colors aren't stimulating. The knits aren't stimulating. Like the stitches aren't stimulating. Whatever it may be, there's a reason why you're not engaging in the project that you're working on. I mean, of course, everybody's different. You could just love having tons of different options to work on. I do feel like I, in the future, I'll probably find a nice balance of maybe having like a couple different types of projects going on. But like I haven't even crocheted on my son's blanket. So <laughs> I do think once my spring sorrel gets to the sleeves and I'm only doing knit stitch and the body and I'm just doing knit stitch, I think that's probably when I'm going to start feeling like maybe I want to cast on something else. But I will say from my experience of working on my good grandpa cardigan from Kadri that I did, um, you know, not too long ago, it was like one of my first major finished knitted projects. I didn't really have the urge to cast on anything else while I was working on that. So I'm kind of hoping that that's how it is with this project that I just really end up enjoying knitting on it. So anyways, so... I'm just going to briefly show you. This is my Knitting for Olive purchase here. We've got lots and lots of cotton merinos here in the color, uh, what is this, dark ochre. And we've got some, what color is this? We've got some strawberry ice cream and I've got some silk in here. I've got some heavy worsted for a sweater. I've got some mohair. Um, that's going to be paired with this for a sweater for my daughter for the winter. So if you're interested in the projects that I'm doing with this yarn, as well as showing you this yarn a little bit more in detail, hop over to my Knitting for Olive unboxing. But that is it for today, guys. Nothing else. Woohoo! We're done. I'm sweating. <laughs> All right, guys. I cannot wait to just get this off of me. I am so hot right now. So anyways, thank you for tuning in and um, yeah, probably the next video you'll see it will be when I finish my spring sorrel and hopefully maybe I'll, I'll work on my Carla's dress a little bit more and I'll probably cast on a knitting for olive project. Um, also too, I have planned, um, I had purchased uh, two monthly yarn clubs from some girlfriends of mine, Hawari Bazaar, Corinne, love her and Kelsey from Knitting Nakabi. And I'm hoping to get some yarn 
um, from another girlfriend of mine that you'll recognize from the Ramadan Wool Club from Fruitful Fusions, um, Israt. And so anyways, so you will see those yarns in the future as well. I'm going to do a little unboxing of the monthly club. So two of them are monthly clubs. Um, Isra, I'll just be getting some of her yarn. Uh, but I did a Sailor Moon monthly box, and I'm so excited because I loved Sailor Moon growing up. I used to sketch her and everything. So I had to finally get one of Corinne Hawari Bazaar's Sailor Moon monthly boxes. And then if you're following Kelsey, she specializes in natural dyes and using non-super wash yarn, which... Um, did I show you guys? I don't think I showed you guys. Okay, so I guess this is kind of uh, a new acquisition. So this is one of Knitting Nakabi's uh, monthly yarn clubs. This was her unicorn inspired colorway called Celestial. It's a non-superwash DK weight, 100% merino, um, and it's dyed with indigo, logwood, and lac. Like how cool is that? So you can see kind of the sky blue. Underneath here is more of the pink. So you can see the pink and then we have the lavender there. And I've been wanting to work with non-super wash for quite a while. It is so soft. I'm really excited to work with it. It's a little bit more dense than say like a super wash. This is super squishy. This feels a little bit more dense, but it's still really, really soft. Um, and so anyway, so I was only able to get one though. <laughs> because I actually, I didn't sign up for the club. She had just had two Hanks left, a fingering weight and a DK weight after they were sent out already. And I was actually gonna buy both of them. <laughs> but the girl who bought my knitting needles actually purchased the fingering weight one. And um, so I went ahead and grabbed the DK one. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. The only thing I could think about doing with one DK weight Hank is either making a pair of socks, which I don't really wanna do with non-super wash um, because you wash your socks quite a bit, you know what I mean? And I don't wanna to have to worry about that. So I might make a beanie in the summer. I need to practice my cables. So Kelsey actually sent me over a couple cabled uh, knitted beanies and I liked one of them. So I'm considering that for this. So anyway, so that's actually another acquisition that I got. I'm thinking about doing a video um, that shows all of my future plans for projects. I have yarn stashed away with patterns that I plan to do with that yarn. Um, and then, like I said, the Hawari Bazaar yarn, I didn't finish what I was saying. I'm actually going to be doing the Ranunculus. Um, so I'll show you guys that. I'll do the unboxing. Kelsey's, I did sign up for her Mythical Creatures Club this month, which is on, it's like a mermaid, but it's called something else. It's like it's like a mermaid creature so it's not like a human that has a tail but it's like the mermaid creature that has like the fin and stuff like that but the colorway is going to be like aquas and greens and blues and i'm just like super excited for it and um so i only bought one in fingering weight but then i bought a few of her extra little minis that she did for the ramadan wool club because i actually plan on doing the honeycomb shawl from uh stephen west so i might look like a beginner right now okay but i have got some projects that i'm excited about for this year that are pretty much all knitted <laughs> i only have like a couple crochet projects on my quo um so yeah so if you're kind of like oh i like your podcast but i like watching things that are maybe a little bit more advanced or whatever don't worry my patterns my knitting is getting a lot better i am super adventurous so I've got the spring sorrel, I've got the ranunculus, I'm going to be doing um, the honeycomb shawl, I'm going to be doing the what the fade I think it is uh, from Andrea Mallory, um, I'm going to be doing some of the um, petite knit patterns for my daughter and then I have two knitting for olive patterns um, for my daughter as well. So and then I have, oh my gosh, I have a lot. Anyways, I'm, I'm done for the rest of the year. All of my projects are already accounted for. I can't even imagine doing... Oh, and I'm doing a colorway project this year. What is it called? Oh my gosh, I can't think. The Bol Boltian? I forget who... I'll write it right here. The Boltian, that's going to be my colorway project. I'm getting yarn. I'm dyeing it myself, and I'm doing the Boltian. I love this sweater so much. <laughs> so... So I'm really excited about this year with knitting and crocheting. I'm just feeling very inspired. So anyways, this is very long. Thank you for tuning in. I will talk to you later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.